And we're live. Hey, everybody. Sean with Pop Cycle Bobbles here. And uh, you might be hearing some noises. And uh, that is because we have a lot going on in the house. Uh, the very short version is Laura and I are getting ready for Dragon Con 2022. And if you know anything about that, that means that there is all kinds of stuff that is happening in the house right now. We're making all kinds of things perler beads, new designs. We started coming up with our own stuff that we're starting to put on some really interesting materials. So if you hear beeping and booping in the background, that's because Laura is currently trying out some new technology. You may also notice that this webcam is right here, and that's because today we're going to talk about something not uh, Dragon Con, not uh, our normal stuff. We're actually going to talk about a role-playing game, um, specifically one of my favorite things ever. And uh, I really want to uh, uh, just for a moment here kind of set the stage before we get going, let folks get in here uh, and just say, first off, hi, I know we keep saying we're going to be back and it takes forever for us to come back. That, that is not a, a, a thing we're doing on purpose. There are extremely good reasons why we have not been able to broadcast in the last, oh, I don't know, half year. Um, but when we're able to talk about it, we will. Uh, but Laura and I are fine. We're doing good. A lot of good, positive things are happening. Uh, it just so happens that it's not stuff that we can talk about right now. Um, but we have been doing a lot of things like just making goals for ourselves and hitting those goals. And so we wanted to do something really cool. Um, and one of the things I did was I really wanted to start stretching my wings as far as uh, doing role playing games again. And uh, as you know, if you're a follower of this uh, 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 channel, we have been playing Dungeons and Dragons forever. And um, one thing that I was a big uh, proponent of was building your own world. And I have made a lot of efforts towards doing that exact thing. Um, I have no idea what just fell, but something just fell. Um, I don't know what the heck that was, but something just fell. I think the dogs are trying to get my attention, but it's okay. We're gonna press on. Sorry about that. Um, anyways, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, so building worlds and stuff like that. I really want to try something a little different. And my friend Gary, uh, uh, Gary Mitchell, who is from the American Sci-Fi Classics track at Dragon Con, mentioned that he had a buddy who was coming out with a new uh, role-playing uh, uh, supplement for the Alien RPG. And I said, the Alien what? The who's it? Now, for those who do not know, I'm a huge geek. I'm a huge sci-fi nerd. I love sci-fi. My top three sci-fi genres are, or, 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 or franchises are Star Wars, Star Trek, and Alien. And I love them all. But I have never had a chance to really play a lot of Alien stuff. And I found out that this was actually being made by a company called Free League Publishing. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love these cats. So I started reaching out to them and saying, I would love to take a look at your stuff. Um, and come to find out, they've been around for like two years and just crushing the role-playing world game. Uh, so let's go ahead. I'm going to split to a split screen here for a second, just so you guys can kind of see. So we have some stuff here, such as the, oh, I'm sorry, that's my Wailing Utani book. And, and uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, that's uh, that's for my players. We're going to we're going to murder them with this later. Uh, there are notes in here, um, but that's OK. No, we're going to talk about the Alien RPG starter set. Now, this is actually a really cool thing. So Free League Publishing, which is the name of them. And in fact, let me go ahead. I'm going to turn on this banner for anybody who's interested in checking them out while we're talking here. Um, this is actually a role-playing game set that you can buy in a couple of different ways. You have the role-playing game starter set, which is like the old-school D&D starter sets where it has everything you need to start to beginning to play right now. Um, they also have a standalone role-playing game book, which is just the, the core edition rules uh, with all the stuff that you need inside of it. And they have some expansion sets, too. Now, they were very generous enough to supply us with some of these things, so that way we can open it and show you what's going to be inside. So this is just the basic uh, starter set. As you can see, it's pretty thick. It's a, it's a nice, thick set, um, and it's actually pretty cool. So we're going to open this up and see what's inside. So let's check it out. So I want to, just for a moment here, I'm going to go ahead and go full screen on that, so that way we have plenty of room to kind of talk. You don't need to see me while we're doing this. Um, sorry for my little dusty area here, but we're going to go ahead and pop this bad boy open, and we're going to check this out. Now, Free League Publishing um, is just finishing an awesome Kickstarter for Blade Runner, the role-playing game. And I am like, what the heck? They did Blade Runner? So uh, their Kickstarter um, went completely bananas, and I got in on that, and I am super happy that I did. 
Uh, and it is compatible with Alien. They use the same system, and it's an extremely elegant system. But as you can see on the back, it gives you basically a, a simple description which says, the job was routine, the money was fair, then the damn company diverted you to answer a distress call from a ship that disappeared almost 80 years ago, a derelict carrying something bizarre, twisted, and alien. What the ship's frozen crew brought back with them was bad enough. What they themselves were turning into was a bloody nightmare. Add to that an annoying sensor ghost shadowing you in the void, and your stress level is shot. It's all a bit much. You don't get paid enough to deal with monsters, but hold your breath. Count to three and play your cards right with this one, and you just might walk away very rich. Oh, who am I kidding? You're all going to die. <laughs> this is a starter set for the official Alien tabletop role-playing game, a universe of body horror and corporate brinkmanship where synthetic people play God while space truckers and Marines play host to newborn ghoulish creatures. It is a harsh, unforgiving universe, and you are nothing if not expendable. Stay alive if you can. Inside this box set, we will have a 104-page rule book with fast and effective rule set designed at specifically supporting the core themes of Alien, horror, and action in the, coldness, uh, the cold darkness of space. There is also a 48-page complete scenario called Chariot of the Gods by sci-fi novelist Andrew E.C. Gaska, taking you on a thrilling, terror-filled ride into deep space where no one can hear you scream. Chariot of the Gods is designed for three to five players plus the GM, which in this game stands for Game Mother. I love that. Five pre-generated characters to play, a huge full-color double-sided map with one side depicting charted space in the year 2183 and the other are floor plans for the Chariot of God scenario. There are also 84 game markers for keeping track of characters, motion tracker pings, and more. There's also 56 high-quality custom cards for weapons, agendas, and initiative in combat, and sets of a 10 engraved base dice and stress dice designed specifically for the alien role-playing game. So that's what is inside of here, and again, it is from... Free League Publishing, awesome people. Thank you so much, Free League, for sending this to us. And let's check this bad boy out. So let's open her up. I have been waiting to get inside of this for like oh, like the whole week. Like it's been here. Oh, check, right. Wouldn't that suck if I opened this up? It was just a chest burster. Ah! <laughs> just immediately. So for those of you who have never uh, watched an Alien uh, movie, Alien essentially is about this uh, organism that is part technological, part bio-organic, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I know, but I'm trying to think of a word, uh, parasite. Uh, the parasite basically uh, infests your body, and then it comes out, and it becomes a big monster with metal teeth, and it kicks your butt. So these are what they call stress dice. Stress dice are noted for being, they're all dice or D6, but I'm going to get really close here to the camera. Hopefully it'll focus. It is a complete D6 system. Hopefully my, my focus here, you can see there's a little face hugger. Come on, focus. Focus on the... There, that is a one. A one is a face hugger. So you can see that a one is a face hugger, and that is not something that you want. Now, stress dice are not your normal dice. We're going to put them to the side for a moment, okay? You're going to have your normal dice. Now, the way this system works is actually extremely elegant. You have a skill, and then you also have a stat that goes with that skill. There's only four stats and only 12 skills. You combine those numbers together, and that's how many dice you get. So in order to succeed, all you need is one success. A success is indicated by this. And here, let me get it close to the camera so you guys can see. One second. Hopefully it'll focus. Focus. There we go. It that is a six. better when you put your other finger underneath it. Yeah, I did. So there you go. Now you can see that is a six. So you can see. So all you have to do is roll a six. So if you get four or five dice, all you want to do, we'll move this to the side for a moment. If you want to roll, boom, there we go. I got a success. That's a success. I succeeded at my skill. Now. That is the basic core mechanic. Super straightforward, not a big problem. Problem is, though, is that as the game progresses, you're going to get stressed out. Now, ironically, people who function under stress will more than likely have the ability to do better at their job to a certain degree. So let's say you had those, again, again those original five dice, right? So you have those original five dice, and you picked up some stress. Let's say the stress gave you three more dice. Now, it works just like the same. If I roll this, and if I make sixes, I win. Whoop. So here we go. So I can see... I was able to successfully roll two sixes. So we can see right there, two sixes were rolled, and one of them was a stress dice. No problem, I succeed. However, stress dice have the chances of rolling a one, and a one is that face hugger. So you don't want that face hugger to happen, because if you do, there's a potential that you panic, and panic can make really bad things happen. You can run away, you can turn on your friends, you can have all sorts of terrible things happen to you. So this is a really elegant mechanic, and that is essentially the whole game as far as the rules are concerned. 
Now you can have modifiers that can give you extra dice or take dice away, but essentially that is the core of the game. And honestly, these dice are a lot of fun. And I was like, oh gosh, that sounds so crazy. Now the cool part is, is you do not need these dice. If you just picked up the role-playing game book and you didn't actually have the starter set, you don't need these. You just need two sets of uh, D6 dice that you can use. Um, however, I'm a big fan of getting stuff that looks properly. Uh, and I also love the fact that you get a little, whoop, sorry, let me put that right. Nah, let me, apologies guys. It's been a while. There we go. I love the little face hugger. Oh, let me do it again. Whoop. Focus on my finger, finger. Come on, do it, do it, do it. It doesn't want to focus. There we go. I love the fact that there is a face hugger on this. So I am like, let's, let, let's, uh, yeah, let's definitely use the core set. Um, I bought the, the role-playing game book uh, as an extra add-on uh, when I got the Blade Runner RPG. So we got a cute little games catalog here. Um, let's take a look at that real quick. Let's see here. So what's in the game catalog? All right. So as you can see here, we have uh, the Alien Tabletop role-playing game. So it has all the material that we see here. Uh, that is the actual book. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that. Um, and then, of course, there's also the uh, DM screen. And uh, we're actually going through the uh, game itself right now. Uh, they also have stuff like Forbidden Lands, which is pretty cool. Uh, basically, it is like a D&D &D system. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think this is their own specific brand. Uh, it is not actually D&D &D rules. Um, we have Tales from the Loop, which, uh, if you've ever seen that Amazon original, is actually pretty cool, which is basically uh, a really cool 1980s sci-fi uh, uh, game, which is pretty pretty damn awesome. Two Tales from the Crypt, like random episode generator yeah for playing game wouldn't that be so cool so that would be it's it's sort of like a build your own role playing game yeah but it's tales from the crypt base so that would be cool it's gonna be some like crazy weird monster or something monster yeah the, the episode mm -hmm. and it's designed to be like a one-off kind of game that would be really cool so that would yeah I feel like like that would be really cool. I think so too. Um, we also have this here right here. It's called Symborum, but that would be a really cool thing to do, um, which is like a darker fantasy setting, which is really dope. Uh, they also have Twilight 2000, which is a, an apocalyptic uh, a, a role playing game. Um, actually, I think it's a, a, a it's like a retro role playing game. Um, and then they have this bad boy called Vassin. Uh, so they have like all these really cool games. Uh, but the stuff that they're really doing right now that I'm just in love with is like Symborium, which won a couple of any awards, as well as the Alien role playing game, which has won all sorts of new stuff. Um, the Forbidden Lands has just been like just crushing it uh, in Tales from the Loop. All amazing. And they just finished yesterday Blade Runner. And I, I know that thing is going to crush. So now we have the card pack. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to open this up real quick. Let me get my little my little plastic cutter here. And you guys can just look at that lovely little map while I'm doing this. Take a little open up. There we go. All right. So let's take a look at this bad boy. Just, uh, no, bleeding on camera. no bleeding on camera, I promise. Okay. So these are going to be your cards. Now, the cool part about this game is that characters will have things like personal agendas. Now, a personal agenda inside of a role-playing game, there are two different ways of playing Alien. Uh, this one is talking about cinematic role-playing. And cinematic role-playing means that there is basically like a script. Now, it's a loose script. You don't have to follow it, but you have agendas. And agendas are basically kind of like what your motivation is for this particular game session. If you do well at your agenda, you get basically the ability to succeed at tasks without having to roll. So if I had an agenda here for first act here, this is for a character named Miller, follow the company protocol, get the job done and cash in. Don't do anything to risk your paycheck. Maybe the next run pays better. So that's your, your motivation. And at the end of that particular uh, game, if you did well for this act, you would actually get a reward. So they actually reward you for playing your character the way your agenda is set up. You don't have to do it that way. You can decide to go off book if you wanted to, but it gives you a chance to actually uh, get a reward. Um, now, what that does mean is that sometimes you might turn into a bad person like in the third act. So, you know, your first act, you're doing okay. Second act, you might be acting a little squirrely, but in the third act, you're just going to shoot people in the head or something. Um, I'm not saying that's what happens with Miller here, but it gives you a good idea. And so each character has three act cards for their agenda. So you can see some people have a lot more on their agenda than others. So that gives you a lot of really cool ideas for people to play. Now, you also have special event moments. So sometimes certain characters will have something that happens to them at a certain point in time, and you would hand them this card and say, this is what's happening to you. 
And these are specific things that are going to happen to characters in that moment. For instance, let's say you got infected by a parasite or you got hit with the black goo from Prometheus or something. That's going to have a bad effect on you. You need to know that that's happening. And your character may not want to tell anybody. So the DM or the GM will slide that to you so that way you know what's going on, but you may not want to tell anybody. So here are our characters. And as you can see on the front is your character. And then on the back, this is essentially all you need to know. And here, I'm going to get really close here so you can see some of the artwork because the artwork is actually really cool. So you can see this is kind of the artwork of the character, right? And then on the back, we have the actual stats here. And I'm, I'm trying to get the make sure we don't get the glare here. But you can see, oh, come on, card. really, card? Are you a really camera? Are you going to just focus on my this dang camera sometimes? I swear. Come on, focus. I'm going to punch it if it don't freaking focus on the dang. It's trying to focus over here on this like, little bastards. Yeah, we're going to just move this out the way for a moment. Come on, focus. Focus. Oh, it's just being a jerk. Really? All right. Well, anyways, so this <laughs> at a certain point, I just have to give up on the focusing on the uh, get really close here. But it gives you all your information that you need uh, and all your characters will have basically a score between two and five. So that's how many dice you have. So if you have a strength here of two, that means you get two strength dice and then you'll have certain skills that might go along with that. Um, so each one of these has a certain skill and a, a, a stat that goes along with it. And that gives you the dice that you're going to roll. And you also have gear and your personal agenda. So that gives you a good idea of what's going on here. And so we have these characters. Let me show you all the different characters we have here. So we have, bah, 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 bah. there's a lot. Whoa, there we go. So there, there's quite a few. Uh, you're talking about for our personal game? Yeah, I made 20. No, no. Like, so these, some of these characters are not necessarily playable characters. Some of these characters are NPCs, but they will let you see who they are. And like they have all their information on them too, because sometimes you need that information for. Alien card? There is not an alien card. <laughs> so in our upcoming game that we're playing, Laura and I are co-GMing. Um, and actually, that's a lie. Laura's not GMing a damn thing. Laura oh, is the alien. I just want to kill things. She wants to kill things. So you also get sometimes while you're playing the game a weapon. So here's oh. your incinerator unit, and yeah, you're like. It won't work on me because I'm dangerous. Okay, so. <laughs> So the incinerator will have a stat. It'll tell you how much damage it can do, uh, what kind of intensity it'll have, and it basically gives you all the information you have for that weapon. So when you find something, such as smart guns, you have your pulse rifles, this is basically all the different stuff that you can get, and each one of them has its own stat attached to them, which is a really useful skill to have um, or a really useful item to have. Well, that's actually pretty cool. Let's check that out. That's the revolver. Now you're going to hurt me. Laura is so confident that nothing is going to kill her alien. So now, lava. The only thing that, is there a lava card? There's not a lava card in this set, I believe. <laughs> so now then you have your initiative. Now this is actually a really cool feature in the game. Instead of dealing out or everybody rolling for initiative, I just basically shuffle this cards together. So I just kind of do a quick shuffle and I'm just doing a lazy shuffle right now. So, and then what I do is I say, okay, first character, your initiative is eight. Next character's initiative is seven. Next character's initiative is three. Next character's initiative is two, one, six. And then basically whoever has the lowest initiative, they go first and then so on and so forth. Um, so then they know what their initiative is. So that's a really cool thing to do. Um, and that allows everybody to just kind of not have to worry about, oh, well, I rolled this. Um, there are things that will allow you to have a better initiative, but in general, this is um, just a real nice, elegant way of getting to the action. Because that's one really cool thing about this game system. They want you to get to the fun. They don't want you to get stuck with having to deal with all the minutia of these really nitpicky rules when nine times out of ten, people either ignore them or they're just like, let's get to the fun stuff. Now, on top of that... You don't have to add up a whole bunch of D20s. Right. You don't have to add up a bunch of D20s. You just go. So next here is going to be our map. Ooh, this is a big old... Th this is a really nice yeah, map. We yeah, we do have players that don't math. Uh, roll time can take a while. Yeah, it can take a while. So this is the, the Chariot of the Gods thing. We'll come back to that in a moment. I'm going to pull this aside. We're going to take a look at this. This is a big old honk of a map. Holy moly. Okay, so let's... Dear Lord. Uh, this is like thick. Oh, whoa, it's like plastic. So this is... Dear, holy moly. All right, trying to show you guys this. So this is part of the, 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 the just the map of the uh, ship that you can play on. And you can see you have different decks that are going to be available, as well as up here it shows you what kind of ship this is. And if that looks familiar, that's the ship from Prometheus. 
So you're driving one of those bad boys. Um, but yeah, you have a really cool, uh, just nice, this is a really nice, thick plastic map. I'm really impressed by this. Uh, and then on, it's so big, I have to show it to you in two you know seconds. The, okay, that was that particular deck. Uh, <laughs> but you can see you even have like down or here. A Lego man. It could be a Lego man. But so then you also have down here, you also have a legend showing what each parts have. And what's really cool is if you look here, and, I, and I'm going to try to show you as best I can here, uh, you have all these different rooms, but then you also have these little dot. And let me try to get a little bit closer here so you can see that. But there are actually just little tiny paths, little dotted lines. Those are going to basically be all of your uh, ventilation units. Um, so that way you can kind of move around. Um, on the flip side of this, holy dear Lord. Trying to show this to you guys is, yeah, this is adorable. This is adorable. This is a nice, adorable map. Holy crap! This is a map of known space. So there's actually a funny rule here, which is so like Earth is right dead in the middle, right? So this is where we are, and then you have all these different regions that are going around here in different colors. So if you see like this violet color, that's what they call the frontier. If you see this kind of like really dark purple plum color, that's going to be the United Americas, uh, which is North, South America, and Latin America. Yellow is basically where all the corporations are at. They are called the independent core colonies. Then you have what is known as the three world empire, which is essentially the British Japanese empire. And then you have the United uh, uh, Progressive Peoples, uh, Union of Progressive Peoples, which is going to be this orange area. And you can see that they're basically all spinning out from Earth, and then they kind of go towards the core uh, out towards you know the galactic uh, 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 space but this is all being measured out by parsecs so each parsec is about 3.26 light years if i remember correctly oh look at this hold on let me i got gotta fold this up a little bit right here it tells you one square is one parsec 3.26 light years that's nice i didn't have to remember that but so you can actually see that it goes out 23 parsecs to the very edge of this like this map is so huge i can't even get it in camera but th this is a freaking awesome map. Um, but what's really great about this is it also starts to talk about the fact that one of the reasons why they only go so many parsecs out is because it's very difficult to keep supply lines. And movies like Prometheus and whatnot have tried to go past that 23 points uh, and they get lost. Um, or not Prometheus, um, Covenant will try to go past the 20 parsec rule and anyone that has gone out that far has actually been lost. The furthest one out would be the one all the way in the 23rd parsec over here, which is 78, New SETI. Now, the thing that everybody wants to know is, okay, but where is all the good stuff happen? Where is LV-426? Earth is here. LV-426 is way down here. So LV-426 in the Zeta-2 reticuli system is way down in this region, right down here. So you can see that this is about 11 parsecs out, so approximately 33 uh, ballpark um, parsecs away from Earth. Uh, and that gives you a really good idea of what's going on. But what's really cool is that they even have, and I'm going to move this to the very bottom so you can see this. Instead of north, south, east, west, they're actually focusing on which direction the galaxy is spinning. So if we're looking north, that is called spinward. If you're going east, that's towards the core of the, ga of the galaxy. If you're going south, that's called trailward. And if you're going west, that's called rimward, towards the edge of the galaxy. But this is a fantastic map. And the branding is on point. So, uh, you know, we already talked about the branding up here, but we also have the awesome Whalen yutani Oh, sorry, my little wire cable. Stupid cable. Hold on, my cable got in the way here. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. Sorry about that. So we have this awesome Whalen yutani branding down here, which, of course, says Building Better Worlds. And uh, we all know that's a crock of, yeah. of BS. But that is a freaking amazing. This is like sturdy vinyl. Like, this is heavy duty. Um, that is nice. So definitely, yes, those are pressing because a lot of other brands are super thin are in paper. Very and, thin and yeah, and flimsy. absolutely. You're scared to actually use them. Yes, I am scared. That is that is a nice thick map. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start getting into the the, the more deeper parts of this. So we're going to go ahead and empty out the box. So we empty out the box here. Let's see what else we got. So we have, of course, the tokens. Awesome. So these tokens here, you can see, are different characters. So you have like Colonial Marines here. It looks like we got like some. Some roughnecks and whatnot. Laura's favorite. Let me zoom in real close. So hopefully it'll focus there. We're going to have things like aliens. We're going to have face huggers. We got a queen alien token right there. We also got some spaceships in case you're doing spaceship battles. 
We got these little deformed little guys. So let me see if it'll focus on it. Those are um, those little like uh, abominations from like Prometheus, like when they get exposed to the black goo. Yes, the black goo is actually involved in this. But check that out. That is some really cool stuff. And I can pop any of these out and I can use them as is needed. So that is pretty cool. And then, of course, right here, you also have like, you know, firing weapons. You have power sensors maneuver. And then on the back of these, you also have, and I'll get really close again. You have, come on, focus. Well, the words are going to be different things. So the words are if you're doing starship combat. So it's going to be like decelerate, maneuver, come on, focus. Why aren't you focusing? I do not know why my camera is not so focusing. Is that what, like, the, because I, I noticed some people have a pilot skill? Yes, some people have pilot you skills. you can role play actual, like. Yes, you can do space battles. Battles, okay. I don't like, know. Aliens or other people? With other people, because sometimes you're going to be fighting humans. I mean, half the time, humans are the problem in the damn game, right? You know, because humans are trying to screw other humans, you know, for, you know, profit. So that is always a problem. Ooh, what the heck is this? Ooh. Capitalism. Okay, check this out. Okay, so let's, we got more stuff. Okay, so this is going to be the actual role-playing scenario, Chariot of the Gods. We'll get back to that. But let's take a look at this. So those cards that I showed you earlier, this is... A, a bigger version of that character. So I'm going to kind of angle this so you guys can see a little bit easier. And this gives you actually a little bit of a background information on the character, what your talents are, what your abilities are. And if you flip it over, you have an actual nice, this is like a really nice, like super glossy page with all the stuff. You, I, I put dolls of donuts. It's probably dry erase too. Um, Cause it has that kind of uh, uh, texture on it, but you can see what your stress levels are at, how much health you can put in here. Um, this is really, really nicely made. This has a nice durability. Like, it must be. They, I don't think they designed something for 25 years, right? It, I, I would not imagine so. But so these are your characters. These are the actual characters you can play. So we had, so right here is going to be Cham. Oh, let me again try to, I don't want it to get a, a, a glare here on you guys. But so we have here Cham, who is a roughneck. All right. So he's just a cargo handler. Uh, just. Uh, we also have Davis, the pilot. All right. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we then have Miller. The officer, nice. We have Rye, the roughneck, dope. And Wilson, the company, uh, the company agent. So yeah, he's a he's a jerk. We haven't even played the game. We know he's a jerk. He's the butt kisser. He's the butt kisser. He's the one who's going to get everybody killed. <laughs> so we know that's going to happen. So we're going to put those to the side for a moment. That that is really nice. And then here is the short rule book for the role playing game. Um, there is a thicker version of this, which is 230 something pages. You know what's funny what's is up? How the pictures all look so awful. You think in the future they did what downgrade megapixels? So the funny part is, is they actually kind of talk about this, which is the fact that the technology in order to uh, send people into space, FTL drives and terraforming, is so expensive and takes up so much computational space. They have basically low resed everything because the computer is keeping everybody alive. You know, now the really high end stuff, like if you're a super billionaire, you can get a billionaire yacht that has like holograms and like projection tables and stuff. But for like space truckers, like in the Nostromo and the original Alien, you ain't going to get none of that, man. You're going from point A to point B. They're giving you the basic, if they could put a Commodore 64. So they're like the Empire. Yeah, they're like the Empire. They're, <laughs> it, it, it's, they're giving you what you need in order to get to where you need to go. And that's it. They're, they're not giving you any luxury items whatsoever. So, all right. So let's take a look at this role-playing game book. Now, this book I've already read through a couple times. It is dope. It is a really nicely put together uh, piece. Um, as you can see, it says space is hell. It's really awesome photo or image of uh, somebody exploring and there's a xenomorph behind them. Um, they're going to die, but this is a very well put together book. It has a really nice feel that feels futuristic, but it feels futuristic from 1984. So it has a very retro vibe, but it's also very futuristic, which I think is one of the great pieces that make this system and, and this universe so fun because it's clearly anachronistic compared to our technology today, but yet it still feels like it's the future. And that is a cool thing. So it's just talking right now about some of the stuff that you can do. Uh, careers on the frontier. You could be a colonist. And here, I'm going to angle that a little bit. You could be a colonist or you could be a space trucker. You can also be a colonial marine. And you can also be a company rep. And it shows you some of this stuff that you have in here. And it's talking right here about cinematic play versus campaign play. And the difference here is that cinematic play 
is it's only meant to be like two or three game sessions, maybe four if you're pushing it. Campaign play is long-term play. We're actually in our group doing campaign play, but we're doing it as a bunch of cinematic quote unquote movies. So that allows us to basically jump around and we can have recurring characters show up and then they can disappear for a while and then come back. Um, what, I, what I love about this is notice that there's not a ton of compact text. Most of the stuff here is nice. It's spaced out there. You're not reading super tiny compact script. If I compared this to say a D&D book, you would have two columns, super tiny text, so many rules. This one is like, hey, these are your key themes here. This is space horror. This is sci-fi action, but there's still also a sense of wonder. That's a nice thing. Like they're giving you basic, basic, basic premises that can then be expanded with your imagination. They're giving you what you need as far as the actual system, but they're not overfeeding you rules because sometimes overfeeding rules is actually a bad thing. This is not something that you want to do. But you can see here, really cool stuff, core concepts. You're going to have your career, your attribute, your talent, and your skills. Pretty straightforward. You know, you're know, you going to have things like stress levels, your health, your personal agenda. You also have a cool system called your buddies and your rivals. This is awesome. So when you start the game, you have somebody who is considered your buddy and somebody who you hate. Everybody has a friend and everybody has an enemy. And as you play the game, you can choose if your enemies become your friends and vice versa. So that is a really nice little thing to kind of set up. They have your gear, things like consumables and encumbrance. The consumables idea is actually really nice. Um, unlike, say, in D&D, where you're supposed to keep track of all your food and water and whatnot, in Alien, you don't have to worry about keeping track of any of that until basically the poop hits the fan. Once that happens, then you need to make sure, do I have water? Do I have oxygen? Do I have food? Otherwise, you have to go and find it, which can put you in danger and obviously get you in contact with an alien. Encumbrance is pretty straightforward, so not a whole lot new there. Uh, they're talking about skills. I love the layout. I love that. Th How many times do you run across a role-playing game that is trying to give you all the rules, and they take the time to give you a two-page spread just to show you really cool art? I mean, look at that. And, it just, and it's just a quote here. Literally, it's just a quote from Alien, um, which is also another thing that they encourage you in this role-playing game, which is crib notes from the game. M quote the different movies. Uh, quote your favorite sci-fi and your fantasy. This is supposed to be a shared universe. Have fun with it. Uh, this is giving you the basic system, talking about the rolling dice. So again, you have your base dice, right? So you have your base dice. If you roll a six, you succeed. So if I got to roll all these dice and one of them comes up as a six, boom, I win. If I'm stressed, I get to add on more dice. But if one of these little bastards maybe comes a one, well, I got a face hugger, and a face hugger gives me a whole nother problem. And that is a cool system. So the idea is you want to stay unstressed, but you're playing in an alien game. You're inevitably going to get stressed. You can't help but be stressed. That's awesome. You also have the ability to sometimes push your role. This is a great idea. You fail. Oh, crap. I'm going to die. You have the ability one time to push your role. And if you push that role, you automatically gain a stress level, which gives you immediately a stress dice. And if that dice gives you a success, guess what? You successfully pushed your roll. If you failed, you just fail. But if you get a, 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 the, the face hugger, um, the one, you then panic and you have to roll on your panic uh, uh, dice and see what happens there. And this just gives you all the basic stuff. I love this. This is so great. I, I keep looking at this and going, where's all the rules? And it's such an elegant system. You don't need a ton of extra rules. I, I mean, you. I mean, yeah. Now, granted, I am. I am extremely paraphrasing, but that's the basic gist. I mean, look at this. It's so nice. Is everything okay? Oh, Cordy's feeling a little sick. So we're gonna. She's not going to, you know that. Okay, so pause for just one second, guys. I got to make sure Corday doesn't do what she's about to do. So just hold on. We're going to leave it right here for a moment. Corday, Corday, hi. Hi, baby. Hello. Nope, Corday, no. Mama, hurry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I was trying to keep Corday from um, having a moment here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and finish this up real quick because uh, that, that's never okay. fun. All set. Okay. 
So going back to here, they're talking about combat and panic. So combat basically is going to talk about uh, your time and your space. You're also going to talk about playing through maps and zones. Uh, essentially, they're talking about different levels of time. So when you're uh, uh, in combat, you have what is called a round. When you are basically exploring, but you know there could be danger, you're using a turn. And when you're resting, you're going through what is known as a shift, like you're working. And that's pretty straightforward. So you also have zone features, such as you're walking through cluttered, dark, or cramped areas. You have range categories, such as engaged, short, medium, long, and extreme. So pretty straightforward stuff. They talk about what stealth mode is. Oh, check out that artwork. That's really cool. Love that. You have to move past enemies while trying to be stealthy. What happens if you get detected? Love this. Using motion trackers, initiative, drawing initiative, changing initiative, using different types of actions. Really, really nice. Love this. And then, of course, you even have stuff like ambushes and sneak attacks. I am just loving this. You can even have combat resolutions, blocking, grappling, shoving. Of course, you can retreat. And again, these are all very basic, very cool concepts, and they're elegant. When I say basic, I'm talking about there's an elegance here that just makes them so nice. And I love that because it means that you have the ability to play a game quickly and understand what's going on without having to worry about stuff. This is, of course, talking about taking damage. What happens if you lose all your health, you break, uh, then people can perform things like coup de gras, and then you also get critical injuries. They have a critical injury health table here, and you have to roll 2d6s, and then whatever those 2d6s are between 11 and 66, that's the number that you get. Uh, so you can get anything from winded all the way down to an impaled heart. And it asks you if it's fatal, and it's like, no, 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 yes. Uh, can you heal from it one day? Uh, is it recoverable? No. Uh, you can also get permanent mental trauma, which is pretty cool, and then you can also have healing. So really kind of cool. Of course, you have your stress and your panic. Stress levels as they increase will give you the ability to actually work. And then you have your panic rolls. And of course, your panic uh, will define if uh, you are going to uh, keep it together or fall apart. So if you roll a one through six on your panic roll, you keep it together. But as it goes up, you start to get a little bit worse all the way to the point where you become completely catatonic. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. You also have other hazards such as conditions, starving, dehydration, the vacuum of space, freezing, become exhausted. Again, really simple stuff. And you just read through this a couple times and then you're good to go. Explosions, falling, diseases are very kind of important in this game. Uh, radiation is also something you have to be aware of. And then you have stuff like synthetics. We have to remember that in Alien, you get synthetics. And in synthetics, they have their own rules. And here we go with the Xenomorph. Now the Xenomorph is known as XX121. It is a freaking crazy monster. And they're basically gonna show you all of the different kind of material that you have. So in this particular book, they're gonna skip over what the Xenomorph can do because they're gonna be linked inside of this bad boy. Now, the best part about this is that if you get the full role-playing game, you do get all the different aliens that are, entire, uh, that are included in there. Um, of course, you have your gear and they even show you, just like those cards we looked at earlier, here are all those materials. So you can see all of that. So now we're just kind of retreading a little bit, but again, very cool. Close combat weapons and suits and armor like the power loader, hell yeah, which is really cool. Of course, they also have things like compression suits uh, and some other equipment such as computers, data storage, and uh, diagnostic materials. We're kind of getting to the end of the book here. Uh, vision devices, and just basically gear. They also use pharmaceuticals, which can help you in stressful situations, uh, food and drink, and there you go. So that is just a quick rule book that'll get you started. And then you have the actual Chariot of the Gods uh, uh, gaming scenario, which again is going to be your uh, actual game itself. Now this is more for the game master only, the game mother, which is gonna basically let you see what's going on. So I'm gonna kind of flip through this quickly because I don't wanna give anything too much away, but you also have reference maps and you're gonna have that material. Again, they're gonna show you who the non-player characters are so that way you know who's gonna be where and what they're doing. Sometimes you can actually become an NPC depending on if the PC uh, has an issue. Again, some nice maps for you to take a look at which is really nice. And then they're gonna have explanations of events that will happen inside of each deck, which is also very cool. 
So we're just going to kind of flip through that. Again, I'm just kind of going through this quick because I don't want to give away too many secrets. Um, but everything that's really cool here that they kind of tell you the, the kind of stuff, surprises that can happen. And then you have your actual act pieces that are going to occur. So in act one, this is the stuff that's going to happen and you can role play through that. And then that kind of goes through here. Then you get to the end of act one and something bad happens. Then you start act two called the long night and all hell breaks loose. And then a, uh, act three is divided. We fall, which is a whole nother monster problem. And uh, it is pretty freaking cool. And then of course they have a little epilogue here, which is it isn't over until it's over. And then you have the xenomorphs, the thing that we show up for. And in this case, they're gonna be working with neomorphs here, which of course we can see over here. So you can talk about what the neomorph is and they show you all the material that will be involved with them. And then something known as an abomination, which is a human that has been exposed to some black goo. You can see what it looks like. It's all nasty and gnarly, pretty awesome. So that is pretty dope. And then they have some extra talents that are available right there. And boom, there you go. And that is going to be the core rules. So let me go ahead and pop this back out so that way we can put this all back together, keep it all nice and, and organized. But that's what you get with your core rule book uh, or your core starter set, uh, which is really great. You get the core rules um, and then you get the first uh, Chariot of the Gods set. You get your dice, you get all your cards that control things like your initiative and give you gear and basically quick start guide. Of course, you, whoop, let me put the map back in first. Excuse me. Bup, 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 bup. Give me that card. You also get this awesome map, which is just adorable as heck. I am like so completely amazed by that map. I am like just wild by it. Uh, I'm going to put these dice back in here. I'm not going to worry about putting them back in their uh, little plastic bag right now. I'm just going to put them right here. But you get 10 base dice set, uh, uh, dice set, and then you also get a uh, stress dice set as well. I'm going to put these little plastic baggies in. Uh, and then, of course, we also have the game's catalog. So that is going to be the starter set. Pretty freaking amazing. I love that. If you guys have never heard of this game before, you absolutely should pick it up. But... <laughs> This is not all that we were given during this thing from Free League. We have some other material, too. So let's go ahead and show you what we have there. So we also were shown some other cool stuff that they have currently out, which is the Alien Colonial Marine Operations Manual. Now, this is a really cool book because not only is it going to tell you more about the Colonial Marines, and there's that map, by the way, that super cool map that we had that I couldn't even put on screen that was so big. There's a smaller version of it. But what's really cool about this particular uh, uh, book is that it actually is broken down into some separate areas. You're going to have Welcome to the Core, the history of the Colonial Marine Corps. You're then going to have how they're organized. You're going to have the ability to make custom cl uh, Colonial Marines, what their gear is. And then the last half of this book, like really a uh, uh, good chunk of it, is going to be the Marine Campaign. And this Marine Campaign is going to allow you to basically uh, uh, play through a long campaign mission. So you're going to have all sorts of different stuff, systems, bases, black projects, missions, war frontier, all this stuff. And it goes basically from page like 103 all the way to like 352. It's just all book. Uh, it's just all campaign stuff. And again, the same beautiful formatting, the same absolutely amazing artwork. Again, they don't try to overload you with too much information at one time. Just gorgeous artwork. Absolutely fantastic. Histories. Um, I love this problem with androids. Love that biological warfare. They talk about the, the battle for the Chinese arm of space, um, all kinds of cool stuff. So the, how the, 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 the place is organized. And again, you get a really good idea of everything that you need to play in a colonial Marine squad. Um, and again, I'm flipping through just a little bit here cause there's just a lot. I mean, this is a 400 page book. It'll take forever to go through it. Um, but it gives you a really good idea of exactly what is going on. And I've already read through this as well. It is a very cool uh, book that has all kinds of cool stuff. Um, one of the things that if, if you're a big like weapons nerd, they show you a bunch of cool future weapons from different uh, organizations. So you get like the, the version of the Soviet uh, M4A. Um, you also find out that all UPP uh, soldiers uh, wear pressurized suits and they have guns built into their arm. Uh, so they never have to worry about dropping their gun, which is actually kind of a cool idea, um, which is a reference from an old William Gibson version of the Alien 3 script. You also get some really cool uh, uh, new material as far as like different kind of vehicles, uh, and they let you kind of see all kinds of stuff and what their stats are for that. And if we go in, there should be 
some uh, uh, larger ships in here as well. Let me see if I can find the larger vehicles. There we go. So like this is going to be one of the larger vehicles. I'm trying to get a good angle there for you. So this would be uh, what they call a mantis. Um, and you can see, there we go. We got like this bad boy called the Kremlin. Um, blah, blah, blah. And then this is what the Sulaco was. Uh, uh, so this particular model uh, is a Bougainville class attack transport. Uh, and then you get into the Marine campaign. And then the rest of this is basically different missions, where you have to go, what the squads are, how you handle player casualties, what your combat procedures are going to be, what your missions are going to break down into. It is a pretty in-depth piece. And they really go in and tell you about what kind of stuff is happening and the different life forms that you can find there. Um, I've, I've actually really come to enjoy how they've put this all together. Uh, again, if you haven't had a chance to get this, I would absolutely say why. Oh, here we go. They talk about beyond the 20 parsec limit. This is a thing. Um, and I love basically that they, they they sum it up in just this little bit, which is far past civilized systems. The darkness of space doesn't just stare back at you. It gets inside of you and eats you from the inside out. You don't go past 20 parsecs, people. It's bad. Yeah. And then they have stuff like the black projects. These are basically the dark projects that you don't want to know about, you know, where they're trying to weaponize certain things, weaponize people by turning them into power armor, all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, there is some really cool stuff in here. And I'm skipping over because I want you guys to go and find it and check it out because there is some really, really good stuff in here. Um, but one thing I think is really cool is they have something called rumor control, which is this is what people think they know versus what actually is happening. Um, and then here are the facts. So you have rumor control and then the actual facts that are attached to it. Uh, and that is a really cool way of making your uh, uh, game feel special and different. So this is just a cool thing. I'm just going to kind of flip through here. Um, and if you guys want to, you can check it out. But you can just, it, it is so cool. I love this, you know, different wrecks and whatnot. And I, I am just in love with all of this. It, it is so cool. It is definitely worth your time if you ever get a chance to play through this. Um, there is a lot of good stuff. I love all these maps. They do a really good job of just making you feel like you're there um, and giving you a really good just overlay of what is going on um and that is a big 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 plus in how free league builds their systems so definitely if you get a chance to check this thing out definitely do so but this again just so you can see is the colonial marine operation manual for the alien role-playing game freaking amazing book love this absolutely great and they also sent us one more thing and this is similar to Chariot of the Gods. In fact, it's the sequel to Chariot of the Gods. This is Destroyer of Worlds. So if you play through the Chariot of the Gods inside the starter uh, game, you then can also get the Destroyer of Worlds uh, 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 cinematic system as well. And this is just like the other one, um, except that this is the sequel. So it's basically part two of a trilogy. Now, I say a trilogy because they are releasing later on this year part three called Heart of Darkness, which you can actually go ahead and pre-order. And if you pre-order, you'll get the PDF for the digital downloads already sent to your system. You can play this online, uh, and then the physical will copy will come to you a little bit later. So Destroyer of Worlds is a box set just like the starter game. And again, just like the starter game, you're going to have your story cards, which are going to be specific motivations and things that happen during the game during separate acts. Of course, you're going to have the personal agendas like we had from before. And then you're going to have, oh, here comes one of those super awesome maps again. Oh, I love these dang maps. These maps are so freaking cool. Let me move this out the way. Hold on. This is just, oh, I love these maps. This is like, I think my favorite thing of the whole bit, which is, holy moly, this thing's huge. Like, what the heck? What the heck? So I can't even show you, like, how big this thing is. It's just, dear Lord, it's massive. That's what she said. But look at this. It is freaking gigantic how big this map is. And then on the other side is ah, the map of this particular colony. So let me try to show you. So they show you like this whole dang colony of where stuff is happening. And you can go and find where you're supposed to be. Um, this is huge. Look, I, mean, I have to show it to you like in sections. Like how big it is. It's like freaking massive. But that is freaking dope. I love that. So, okay, so you got that super huge map. Then we have smaller maps, such as you're going to have, like, a bar, right? So this is the bar. 
and then that bar can open up. You can also have the Marshall Station. And on the back side, there are going to be some smaller areas, such as the medical facility and also an oil refinery. And again, let me make sure I just let you guys see all that nice and clearly. There you go. And kind of get a good idea of what you're looking at here. So I think that is pretty cool. And then you have more mappage. Then there's a handout that I can give to somebody as well as another map. So again, just, and these are really door, I am really impressed with the durability. These are like vinyl, I love this. Same material as the larger maps, just really nice durable pieces that you have here. And of course, just like the other uh, box set, you also have characters. So we'll just kind of flip through these real quick. Got a couple of characters here. So you're going to have your different characters. Again, nice glossy. Um, I think that they're almost like white, uh, not whiteboard, but uh, 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 um, they have the ability for you to like rewrite on them. Uh, this one's a little bit more filled out. You can see they have more weapons and material. Uh, obviously, these are mostly Marines here. So we have different Marines that are going to be uh, uh, player characters, which is pretty cool. Um, gunnery sergeants. Uh, oh, here we go. There's a warrant officer here. So we got a warrant officer. Uh, we also have captains, sergeants, and then also uh, a private first class. So you got a nice array of uh, different uh, 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 um, ranks of characters. So if you wanted to play somebody who was the leader, or if you just wanted to play, quote unquote, you know, a grunt, you could do that, even though they're not grunts. Um, but, you know, basically just the front line. So that gives you that. And then, of course, you have the actual game itself. And again, just like the other one, it gives you the same basic breakdown. And again, I've read through this one. It is freaking awesome. Um, I am just blown away by how well they put this together. This is a really cool one because this is a system that starts off with the fact that there's a war that's brewing between uh, the United Americas and the UPP. And the whole goal of this particular one is that there is a, a system that's on the border between the two um, that is full of oil. Uh, they still need oil to produce certain materials. And um, because of that, this is a fairly valuable location. And uh, they basically start to have a war breakout at this colony because there are people who want to secede to the UPP and there are people who want to stay with the United Americas and all hell breaks out. And then you find out there are other things on this planet as well, um, which is pretty freaking cool. There's also a really, really great subplot about some AWOL characters and also uh, an evil artificial intelligence that is trying to control certain people. By the way, that giant map I was trying to show you earlier, that's what all that material is. But it's this huge, giant vinyl map. It's freaking gorgeous. And you can see now, you can see that they have smaller versions in here for the, the, the game mother so they can keep an eye on stuff. So you, you can only uh, have to put out the big maps when you need them. But again, I love the way they set this up. Um, I think if I had only one complaint... They tell you about so many things that are happening during the map descriptions, and then at the end, they tell you what happens during each act. I kind of wish the act material was up front, but that's a pretty minor complaint. Uh, they give you the summary at the front, but then they break it down in, in real clear terms uh, at the end. And here, let me flip forward to the end so we can kind of talk about that for a second. So da, 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 where is, we go, right, we got the climber car. By the way, if you can see that, we got an alien queen. So that is actually an alien queen. So if you want to play against the queen, there we go. So here we go. But then this is actually the breakdown of Act 1 uh, of the things that are actually going on, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, and then, of course, you have uh, Act 2. And, of course, since it is built like a movie, you then have Act 3, um, which is freaking awesome. And this is actually some pretty cool stuff that happens. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it does, but let me just tell you that people who are on the surface of this planet when Act 3 kicks in is bad. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it is pretty crazy. Basically, you have to take a space elevator. Um, and then in this one, you actually do get the xenomorph. So you have uh, anathemas and you have aberrations, uh, but then you also have the classic X121, uh, the XX121, which is the big boy himself, the, the big chap, as they call him. Uh, so they show you the entire life cycle of the alien and what it can do, which is freaking amazing. 
So again, so Laura, when she's playing, she gets to play the aliens. And uh, the fun part about aliens is that they are unpredictable even to players and game masters. So when an alien attacks, they have to roll to see what they actually are going to do. Sometimes they will actually just uh, uh, run away. Other times they will kill. It just depends on what kind of mood the alien is in. And uh, yeah, so there you go. But I love this. It is so much fun. And uh, I, I, I am just blown away. Um, yeah, Free League, I reached out to them and said, I would love to talk about this and to just show it to some people and, and let them see. Because I, I didn't even know this game was out. And when I heard about it, I was like, I got to tell everybody I know. And uh, they were so kind and they sent this to me to show you guys. And I was like, this is awesome. Um, and I absolutely cannot wait for part three, Heart of Darkness, to come out and get the print version as well. Because I think that is just going to be the... Uh, uh, um, the, the cherry on top of a Sunday of about two years of publishing of just fantastic material. So if you've never played a role-playing game before or you want to do something different than Dungeons and Dragons, I cannot suggest enough giving Alien the role-playing game a shot. Uh, you have a lot of different options, a lot of different abilities uh, and uh, things available to you. You can get the starter set, you can get the role-playing game core rulebook, and then, of course, you can then get the actual cinematic uh, spinoffs, such as Destroyer of Worlds. Inside of the starter kit, you also get the Chariot of the Gods. And then you have a long-term campaign with the Colonial Marines Operation Manual. So there you go. And uh, with that, I'm going to click back to both of us. Boom. And, uh, yeah, that was a lot. Um, this is really cool stuff, guys. If you don't get a chance to play this... Um, let me know. I would love to be able to like tell more people about it. Uh, uh, a bunch of us are going to start playing this relatively soon. We keep rescheduling um, just because life gets in the way. Um, but we are going to be playing this in the next couple of weeks. And uh, then I will have even more to talk about uh, because I'll be able to tell you guys firsthand experience exactly what is going on with these. Um, but if you have any questions or if you'd like to see me do more unboxings, if you'd like to know more about this, uh, feel free to ask, put questions, throw, throw us an email. Uh, of course, you can reach me on any social media at Numa Z. That's P-N-E-U-M-A-Z. You can also find my wife, Laura, on most social medias as Dr. Mrs. The Awesome. That's D-R-M-R-S-T-H-E, awesome. And uh, I think that's going to be it for us. Um, this has been an awesome hour. So much material. Apologies for Corday feeling a little sick. Uh, um, so we're going to go check her out, make sure she's doing okay. Uh, but yeah, that's life in the Popcycled house. So we hope to talk to you guys again very soon. Uh, in fact, plan on it. We have some cool stuff happening, but we're keeping a little quiet on that for the moment. And uh, if there's anything that comes up, we will let you know. Again, thank you so much to Free League Publishing for sending us this. Guys, go check them out. If you're interested in the Blade Runner game I talked about at the beginning, they just finished their Kickstarter. You can still do what is known as a late pledge and still get in on some of that. Definitely check that out. It is worth your time. And uh, again, as always, you know, just thanks so much for following us, checking us out. Go check us out on our different social medias, and we will see you on the next one. So until then, we'll talk to you later. Take care.